It's day three of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission's hearings into the financial meltdown. Today's focus, the GSEs and the people left holding that bag at Fannie Mae. CNBC's Diana Olick joins us from Washington with the very latest. Hello, Diana. Hello, Larry. Blame it on private label securities. That is Wall Street getting heavy into the mortgage market. That appears to be the message from former, former Fannie Mae executives called before Congress today to explain the root cause of the mortgage crisis. It posed a financial threat because there was just simply less, less business um, that was coming into our market. The business was going into another market. Um, it posed a mission threat because many of the products that were financed by PLS had affordability features, and so it threatened our ability to meet our government-mandated government housing, housing goals. It also threatened our relevance with our, our customers. Now, according to Fannie Mae executives, they are through the critical run-up in home prices and the massive run on mortgage-backed securities of the last decade. Fannie Mae and its cohort, Freddie Mac, were trapped between their public mission to provide affordable housing and their private mission to make money for shareholders. As the crisis elevated, they were pulled into loan modifications, refinancing, warehouse lending, and other seemingly desperate attempts to stop the bleeding. Fannie and Freddie were variously pushed to raise capital, earn returns, rescue more borrowers, and cut costs. I sought to balance the fine points of mission and business insofar as I could understand them with the support of regulators and policymakers. That was no longer possible by September 6, 2008, and I am sorry for that. Now, Mr. Mudd was also asked about that day in September of 2008 when Fannie and Freddie were placed into government conservatorship. He said the letter that they received from their leg regulators seemed as if it were something out of the past, noting issues that had already been addressed. He said the letter was simply to force conservatorship. Larry. All right, Diana, thanks very much. So, can Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac be fixed? Joining us now is Sherry Olofsson, real estate attorney at Fowler White Boggs, and Howard Glazer, former counsel to the HUD secretary during the Clinton administration. Sherry, start with you. I, I'm really quite skeptical here. But the, the mud and them are blaming private label competition. But the reality was Fannie and Freddie received a HUD mandate during the 90s and a congressional mandate uh, during the 90s and the 2000s to make unaffordable home loans and put them in their portfolios, creating all manner of credit and interest rate risk at taxpayer expense. So is this guy rewriting history? To some extent, and Larry, I mean, we can't be surprised at the blame game here. We saw it last month when Tim Geithner was in front of Congress, too. I mean, 90 percent of that two-and-a-half-hour testimony and Q&A was all about who was to blame for letting things, or in your case, like you pointed out, forcing things to get so big and so unregulated. But the difference now is all of these sort of problems that we've been looking at, and this has been an issue that's been examined for the last 30 years. I mean, HUD was doing reports on potentially privatizing these GSEs 30 years ago. The difference now is we've seen all of these potential issues become reality. So there's really no one left who can argue that there's not a conflict between the public and private mandates, that the implicit government backing is not a problem, that they're not too big or not too complicated. And now is probably the time to start looking at change. So, Howard, private profit and uh, taxpayer risk in the event of failure. That is not a sustainable business model. What are we going to do about it, and when are we going to do it? Well, you know, you're right. There's absolutely a consensus that that model doesn't work. And if there's one agreement that you saw between uh, both the people testifying today from Fannie as well as on the commission, it's that we all agree the model didn't work. The problem is it's what we're stuck with. You know, you ask the question at the top of the hour here, uh, what, you know, what do we do with them next? Well, it's kind of like asking, uh, is San Francisco, should it be built on an earthquake fault? No, but is, Howard, is I think is. that's a defeatist viewpoint. It doesn't have to be like that. We don't well, have to sit know, back and say, okay, gonna, these can be government-run entities. Why not spin them off? Why not are, privatize them and put some investor money into all this? You know, this? The, the thing is, Sherry, nobody in Washington, even behind closed doors, when you talk to people who on the, in the public talk about privatization, when they close the doors, they say, you can't totally privatize 
because there won't be the investor confidence to come back and keep the housing market but stable. But this model and has to be is, changed, uh, Howard. Howard. There's no question it's got to be changed. You I'm listen not saying, to what? Uh, Trish, Larry, I'm not saying don't Trish is it. going to the heart of it. If you don't change this model, then we are doomed to repeat the past. We know that. Look at all the pressures to go back and buy up stuff on the market that they shouldn't have owned in the first place. Yeah, no, Their Larry, I'm not defending standards the model. fell down. You know that, Howard. You're an expert on this area. And I'm not defending the model. What I'm saying is that the housing market right now is so intertwined with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that disentangling the housing market, which really means the economy, which is really dependent okay, on the housing but, but market right now, extent, is a transition so that is going what? to take I mean, years Howard, and years. Yeah, so Howard, we've is, got, we've got, got a real estate market that was propped up for years. At some point, Sherry, don't we have to take a little medicine here? Yeah, but two things. First of all, I agree with Howard to the extent that now is not the time to do that. We're still in the middle of the crisis, and we really haven't defined how these entities are going to end up, what they're going to look like. We can't unwind them until we know what they're going to look like at the end of the day, and we still have another year at that. In fact, you know, Tim Geithner and the administration have said they're not going to really let us know what their plans are, and for good reason. I mean, Larry, you know that all Timothy Geithner has to do is say he's going to the men's room, and all the investors run out and buy toilet Sherry. paper futures. Sherry. So we Sherry. have to... It's, Sherry, you have I, to wait, but Sherry I am shocked. Yeah. I am shocked that you are taking this wussy status quo position. I am absolutely shocked and disappointed and moderately crushed on a Friday <laughs> on a Friday morning. Because I'm going to argue to, to you that all these government bailouts, whether it's Fannie or Freddie or these phony short-term tax credits or these moratoriums on foreclosures, have done more harm than good. It's only when market prices settle down to their proper equilibrium level in the free marketplace that we will see the sales pick up and the problem will get solved yeah. and we've seen this in California right. we've seen this in Florida but every place Uncle Sam goes the story gets worse why is Fannie and Freddie any different why are you You're being right. so but wussy you know, what, Larry, you know better than this Sherry <laughs> it's time it's time for change but you know what I'm gonna tell you here's the main reason it's time for change Larry and that is that granted uh, we have a lot of problems now and those are incentives but the real incentive is these models worked they were started uh, back after the I, depression what? to free I up the credit markets, is and they worked. Well and now, they now work. we have a Look different environment. Now, now we have global market credit markets moving around. We don't have barriers to, you know, the state banking Sorry, barriers. A lot of these things have disappeared. Sure, no, I think that's and right. Now, well, investors, saying, investors have gotten on, burned in the housing I, market. We've been I, very I, dependent on foreign investors. They're not coming back unless they know there's some kind of federal backstop. And this is the problem that we face today. We can all agree the model is flawed. But what do you replace it with? If right. you go totally it's private, private. I don't think you can some investors are not coming back in, Larry. And if they do, they jump work. back out at the Howard, first sign of trouble, that and that's no stability. They did not work. They got us into the crisis we're in. we got to leave it there, guys. You've got to have some kind of private involvement. You cannot you have a socialized, totally government-run housing sector. If we do, it's going to be disaster for the next 50 years. There has to be a way to ease into some private housing finance and private mortgage insurance, which is what we used to have before these Fannies and Freddies took us over with their portfolios that are essentially casino-related hedge funds. That's all they are, and we have to pay for it. You, Trish Regan, are financing this portfolio hey, hedge fund. Larry, it, you said it. <laughs> you go. All right.